Up until recently, how you build applications with Next.js has stayed relatively the same for the past couple of years. But with the new app router, things have changed drastically. And as of version 13.4, the app router is now stable, which means this is a great time to do a crash course covering some of the core features and changes that come with it, including React server components, nested routes and layouts, simplified data fetching, loading states, etc. And to be able to demo all of this, we're gonna use AppRite, which is the sponsor of this video and an amazing backend as a service platform. So we're gonna set up a database in AppRite and be able to query that data on the server using React server components and using that to use React Suspense and show loading state while that data is being loaded as well. So let's build an application together that takes advantage of all of these new features. Let's take a quick look at what we're gonna build. So I run a Discord community called Learn, Build, Teach, and we have a few different events that we run. And so on this website, we have a view events page, which takes you to a list of events. So you can view a list here. Even has a loading state in here. This is using React server components. So it's actually querying this data on the server. And then we can show multiple in here and we'd be able to show that, and we'll be able to show nested layouts, meaning that I can load the data for a new event without having to reload the rest of the screen as well. So to do this, we're gonna start with a brand new Next.js project. So let's do create next app. And then I'll call this app router demo. And this actually needs to have NPX before it. And we'll say yes, proceed. And then Next.js actually has some cool uh, questions as you build projects now, which is really nice. So are we gonna use TypeScript? Yes, let's use TypeScript. Let's use ESLint. I prefer Tailwind myself, so I'm gonna use Tailwind. Uh, let's use the source directory and then let's use the app router. Notice this is now recommended from Next.js. So we'll go ahead and use that. And then uh, would we like to customize default aliases? No, I'm good with what's there. And so this is gonna go ahead and install our dependencies and then we'll open this up and get started. In the meantime, I just wanna share the main link that you wanna follow with this. So I'll kind of copy in some code snippets here, but here's the link to the actual GitHub repository where you can go and grab any of the information that you want. So make sure you use that as a reference as you go through this and you can kind of copy and paste code if you don't wanna type everything out manually. All right, so this is finished. I'm going to open this up in the same VS Code window. So this is the app router demo. So let's go ahead and start this application. So this will run at port uh, 3000. So let's go ahead and open up. Uh, let's refresh here because that was the previous running version. So this should take us to the uh, regular, just kind of built in by default Next.js homepage. Notice this is localhost 3000 up there. So we're basically gonna kind of rip all of this stuff out. But if we look inside of our source directory, now we have the app directory. And so the way this works is each different page that you want will have a page file. So page.tsx, and this is the home page that we're looking at. And I'm gonna kind of get rid of everything in here and even get rid of the base styles. And we can just say, this is the home page. So now if we come into here, we just see home at the top, which is not great. We'll uh, customize this in a little bit. And if we wanted another page, like an about page, for example, what we'd have to do is create a new folder. And then inside of that folder, we would create the page.tsx. And then we would create a new component and we'll call this about page. And uh, my snippet still imports React, which we don't need. Let's uh, do that. And so this will automatically create another route uh, called, uh, or another page called about. So there's the about page and there is the home page. Now let's go ahead and center some of this stuff. So let's do, let's go to the layout. I'm not worried about using uh, the enter styles here. So I can kind of uh, not worry about that, but notice in this root layout, what we have in here, we take children. So this is basically gonna wrap our entire application. So you see, we have our HTML tag here. We could include header tags here as well for SEO value. And then we have our body content and inside of here we have the children. So this root layout component is basically something that wraps our entire application and we could create nested layouts for that so that we're only refreshing data based on exactly what we need. So if for example, we have a nav bar, we don't need to refresh that nav bar, we just need to refresh that other content. And that's actually a good place to start. So I'm gonna copy in a component for a nav bar. All right, so let's do, a new directory here for components. 
And uh, let's create a new file called navbar TSX. And I'm going to paste in this component. Now, this is relatively simple. This has a header and a nav. It has some basic tailwind styling and it has links to home and then the events page. And then also this should be a link to our discord. So let's do this snippet. So that's the, the actual discord link for people to get there if you're interested in joining us. So there's our nav bar. And then inside of the root layout, I'm going to tweak a little bit of the styles. So I'm going to add in some additional styles in here. I'm going to do this as an ES6 template literal so that we can still keep this enter value that's for the font. And then we can add some additional ones. So let's do a min height of screen and then a BG blue, like a dark blue 950. And then let's set the, set the text to white. And then lastly, what I want to do is go to global CSS. And I want to just take out kind of all the stuff that uh, came with Next.js. So we should now just have like our basic blue background and white text. Now from here, let's go into our layout and let's actually add in our nav bar. So if we just kind of open that bracket and start to type nav bar, we should get IntelliSense to import this. So there's our add import. And this is uh, using the alias syntax. So this is at, which is the root of the directory and then components nav bar, which is really nice. So this should put our nav bar at the top and that's something that's gonna stay on every page. So again, for our layout, we know we can put this inside of our root layout because that nav bar doesn't change, which is really nice. So that's working. Now let's go to kind of the home page, and I'm going to just paste in a few different components in here to make this look a little nicer. And we'll wrap this inside of our parentheses and then add the import for next link. So next link is how you do links inside of Next.js. It's able to take advantage of the fact that Next.js knows about what the different pages are that you might navigate to and do some smart things around this. So in this case, we just have a header, then we have a piece of text, and then a button that takes us to the slash events page. So here is that if we click on view events, this is going to go to events slash events, but again, we don't have a page there. So how do we create a new page? Well, this is again by a directory. So let's create a new directory called events, and then each one of these will have a page.tsx file. So it's, uh, some people love this. Some people I think are still adjusting to this. I'm probably to the point where I appreciate this, but it is interesting to have so many different page files. But the way you would search for this, for example, is I would type in like, instead of just page directly, if I'm searching for a file, I would do events and then page or layout, et cetera. So inside of this page uh, TSX file, this is actually gonna be pretty simple. So let's create a new component. And this is going to be the events page and inside of here, I'm going to do something that might seem a little interesting, but I'm going to add a paragraph text with a class of text center. And I'm going to say, please select an event. And this is class name in React. So this should be able to show if we come to here, uh, notice that our nav bar, you can't really tell the difference, but our nav bar did stay. And then we're just kind of querying this next piece of content. What's also interesting with the uh, link uh, with Next.js, if we look inside of our network tab, if I hover on view events, this is going to make a request to the events page to go ahead and get the content for that page. So if a user is about to go there, it's gonna go ahead and load this data here. So again, it's only loading this part and not loading all of the nav bar again. So that's really nice. Now from here, I wanna create a custom nested layout for the events page. So we have our root layout. If we go back to this, here's our root layout where we have our HTML tag and our body. Then we have our nav bar and then whatever else the children are goes beneath that. So in the children, you can do nested layouts. So let's go into the events tab. Let's create a new file called layout TSX. And let's create a new component and this will be events layout. And what I wanna do is basically do a flex container. So I can do a flex container in here. So inside of here, we wanna have two different parts. One is the sidebar, which shows the list of the events. And then the main part of the content will be the actual event itself. So I'm gonna copy in a new component here and we'll walk through what's here. So we are referencing the Next.js link. We'll go ahead and add that. And in here, we're referencing children. This is gonna come from a parameter inside of uh, the layout itself. Now to get TypeScript IntelliSense here, we can tell this that this parameter 
uh, is an object that has a children property, which is of type react.react node. All right, and then I'm gonna comment out the event list here. We'll come back to this in a second. So what we should see now is that the content that's inside of this page should have the sidebar and then it should display the children inside of the main bar or the main window. So inside of here, we have our sidebar with create a new event. And then notice that the please select event now, the actual page content for event. So this part here is now positioned as the child of the layout. So this is where the nested layouts come in is we have the root layout, which has our nav bar. Then we have the rest of the content. Then we have a nested layout, which has the sidebar, and then it has the rest of the content and it can go on forever and ever as far as you want to with nested events. So I commented out the event list. Let's go ahead and, and comment this back in and let's create a new inside of our components directory. Let's create a new event list component, but this is the way we would typically do this. Now, because we have this page and layout syntax, we could actually co-locate our components inside of the same directory. So we could actually create this component right inside of here. So let's go ahead and create event list. And for this, what I wanna do is iterate through a number of events and then have a link to the actual details of that page. So in this case, we have a header that says, here's all the events. Then we iterate through some array of events and then we reference its ID and its name. So we'll display the name and then the link will link to the details page for that specific event. Now, where do these events come from? Well, in this case, I'm gonna create a, inside of my source, I'm gonna create a utils uh, directory. And then inside of here, uh, this would actually be a directory. Let's go back and create new folder, utils. And then inside of utils, I'm gonna create a new file for events. And for this event data, we're gonna have an event type that looks like this. And then I'm gonna have a, an events array. This is actually gonna kind of fill this out for me with GitHub Copilot. I'm, I'm curious what it goes with. Okay, Angular Connect, Angular Conference, great. Uh, date, great. And then ID of one, great. Will it do another one for me, I wonder? I wonder what the other event is, NGNL in 2037, all right. Cool, and I think that will that will do it enough for dummy data. So these are just random random events that we have in here, and let's go ahead and create a uh, get events function, which just returns the events. So from this utils directory, we have our type of our data in TypeScript. We have dummy data inside of here, then a get events function that's going to return this for us. So inside of our event list, we're going to say events, and this is going to come from the get events. And I think we need to export this from our utils. So let's export uh, both the get events and the interface. All right, so now we should be able to reference this inside of here. So if we get IntelliSense, we can import this from events. So now, now we're able to iterate through this and we should be able to see them displayed if we go back to our layout and then do the import for this one. So we wanna import events list from that same directory. All right, so now inside of here, this should have two different events. Notice that it's making the request for each one of these. So if I hover on this one, it's making that request. That's really interesting. Notice it's also showing up red because these pages don't yet exist. So we don't have a defined route, a nested route for event slash and then the ID of the event. But we do have the ability to have those be selected and now be able to choose the different ones. So now let's go in and create another nested directory. So inside of events, we're gonna create another folder and this one's gonna look a little bit different, although if you've used Next.js, you've probably seen this before. This is going to have a bracket syntax, which basically just means this is going to be a dynamic route parameter. Inside of here, we will have a new page directory. And let's just go ahead and say this is going to be event page. And then what we wanna display in here are the details for a given event. So to do that, we need to actually get the specific event. So let's go back to our details and let's say export uh, con, this is actually it. So this is kind of auto-populating for me. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. So we want a function that will get the specific event from the list of events that we have above and return that to us show that we, so that we can display those details. Now, one thing to note is everything we're doing here is synchronous. We will update this to be asynchronous in a minute and we use AppWrite to be able to query real data and show how this all works put together.
to take advantage of React Server components, which we haven't even touched yet. So inside of the event page, we want to get the event from get event, and then we'll pass in the ID of the event that we're looking for. And this is going to come from params, params dot event ID. Now params is an object or is a property that comes in our props. And this comes from our page props. So we can import that as well. And then right now this is not going to be asynchronous. So we'll just call this directly for our get event. And then inside of here, we want to display the actual event details. So inside of our event ID directory or our folder, let's create a new file called event details. Now, again, previous to this, you couldn't really co-locate uh, components. You would have to put them in a components directory. But now with this new directory structure, we can put them right there together. So we need to get a reference to this events, this event type that comes from our events utils file. So let's just make sure that that is exported. Yes. And let's double check this path. So this will come from our utils directory and then slash events. That should work. So now that we have that in place, let's go into our page for event ID. And inside of here, what we want to do is actually display the event details. So we can just say inside of this div, we're going to have an event details component and we will pass in the event that we just queried to that component. So this is going to yell at us saying that this event could be undefined. Let's go back to our function to query the event. And let's say if we don't find it, so let's say uh, const event equals, uh, and then if there is no event, let's throw new error event not found. So we'll actually be able to handle this with our error state in a second. And I just spent five minutes debugging this because I forgot to add the exclamation here. So if there is no event, then throw the error. Otherwise we will return the event. So let's save this and we should now be able to come to our page and let's go back to just the events tab and let's do now uh, go to one of these events. Now notice as I hover on these, this is querying the data for those. And because of nested layouts, it's only going to be querying the data that goes right here. So after already doing that on the side, that data is already available. So we can just load and show this data super, super quickly and navigate between it. And we're not reloading the events tab and we're not reloading the nav bar because of the way that nested layouts work. Now let's move into React server components, which allows us to run querying for data on the server and then stream the results back to the browser. Now to do this, we're gonna use AppWrite. And so there is a cloud.appwrite.io. And this is a backend as a service platform that has a hosted option for you. And we're going to use this to create up a simple, create a simple project that we can then use in reference to pull data into our Next.js application. So let's say this is our app router demo. Let's go ahead and create this. And then we're going to want a database for this. So let's go ahead and create a database and we'll call this our events database. And then inside of here, we're going to have a collection. So this will be events. This should probably have been like learn, build, teach uh, database or, or whatever, but we'll just keep it at that. And then for the events collection, we're going to add attributes to this that are fairly straightforward. So we'll have a name property. So this will be a string. This will be like 128 characters. This will be uh, required. And we're basically just going to match up with the event type up here, the data, the interface in TypeScript. So we have our name, then we'll have a description. This will be a string as well. And we can say this is size of 512. This will be required. And lastly, we'll have our date. This will be a date time. It will be required. And uh, that looks good. And then we'll have our ID property. So that will be generated for us. So we'll, we'll go ahead and get the ID. Now for uh, our learn, build, teach discord, we do wins of the week each week. So this is uh, a time to celebrate our wins and the wins of others. So we do that. That's typically on Friday. So I'm just going to choose a Friday time in here. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save this document. Uh, this is talking about uh, permissions on collections. We'll come back to that in a second. And so let's create a second document. So we also have a community hour each week. And this is this is a chance to hang out and chat with our 
uh, Discord community mem members. There's a description, and these are usually on Thursday, so we'll have that in there. And then we'll go ahead and click next. Um, and then let's make sure that the uh, this data is accessible to our application. So we can come into the settings for this collection and we can go to updating the permissions. So let's say that any user can do CRUD operations. Now uh, we could actually probably, we could actually should limit this to just create or read, update and delete because we wanna be kind of secure and make sure that unauthorized users aren't able to do these CRUD operations. So now we can just enable read. Now with that, we're gonna need a few different properties inside of our application that we're gonna to add to an ENV variable inside of our application. So let's create a dot ENV and let's create this at the root of our project. This is where we'll have our environment variables. And so inside of here, we're gonna need the project ID, the endpoint, the events collection ID, and the database ID. So we'll just copy each one of these. So here's the collection ID. We'll copy that, paste it in the collection ID. Then we'll go back one to our database and get the database ID. We'll paste that one in. And now we need our endpoint and project ID. And we can find this in our settings. So if we come to settings for this, here's our project ID. So we'll put that one in there and then also the endpoint. So these are all the different properties that we're, we're gonna need be able, we're gonna need to be able to query all of our data inside of AppWrite. Now we'll need to install the AppWrite package. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll install AppWrite. And then inside of utils, I'm gonna create a new directory called uh, AppWrite or a new file, which is uh, AppWrite. And I'm just gonna copy over the configuration for this. So basically from AppWrite, we want to get the client and then create a new client and uh, use that to get a reference to the database by referencing that AppWrite client. So this will enable us to work with our different databases using the AppWrite client. And then we're going to export that so that we can reference it inside of our, let's say that, inside of our events utils. Now from here, we want to actually get rid of this dummy data and we want to actually query data from AppWrite. So I'm gonna copy in a new snippet here, and this is gonna replace all of that code. And we're now going to migrate to async functions that use the AppWrite SDK to be able to query our data. So let's walk through this really quickly. And again, the source code for this is available in that GitHub repo, so you can go and copy and paste this if you don't wanna just manually type it all yourself. But inside of the get events function, this is going to be async, and this is going to reference the AppWrite database it's going to list all the documents associated with this database ID in this collection. We're gonna get those documents, cast them to the event array type, and then return those. So instead of referencing that dummy data that we were before, now we're actually getting data from AppWrite. Then we have a create event. We'll touch on this at the end of this video, but we won't really dive into this. And then lastly, we have, I think we just named this a get event earlier. So get event is also a sync. It takes in that ID. And then it's going to use the AppWrite database to query from this database, from that collection, an item with the ID that matches that parameter. If that event is not found, it's gonna throw that same error. And then we're going to return that event. And we also have our TypeScript interface down here. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. And let's move over to our event list component. Now inside of here, event list, because it's now async, it doesn't return an event array. It returns a promise of an event array. So we would need to wrap this or uh, call a wait before this and export this as an async function. So now that looks good, but we have an error inside of our page.tsx for the event details page. And this is because we need to mark this as async as well. So async function and then await that response to get that data. Now, this is going to work, but what's really interesting is now we're diving into React server components, which is now running this logic on the server before sending and streaming that data to the browser. So let's go back to the event list. And you probably know in typical React, we have never been allowed to just run asynchronous code right inside of the component definition. In this case, we're using async await in here and we're running logic that we want to run on the server, even though it looks like it would run on the browser. So this is how React server components work, is we can run this code right inside of here, use async await, no worries, 
And these components by default that are inside of the app directory are React server components that are specifically designed to run on the server. So what happens is React will, or Next.js will kind of return this without the events data. So it kind of leaves this as an empty block. So it knows it has to wait to get this data. It will return the HTML to the browser and then it will update that with the data that we get back here, which is pretty neat. So if we go and refresh this, we should be able to see we have our wins of the week and then we can uh, move between wins of the week and community hour and see that data updating as well. Now, one thing that is interesting is what happens if we type an ID in here that doesn't exist? Well, we're just getting this really big error inside of Next.js, which we don't want the user to see. So what's cool is inside of this new app directory world, we can actually add an error.tsx TSX file and do a new error component. So event error, for example, and say, couldn't find that event. All right. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that this error component is run specifically on the browser. So if you want any components to run in the browser that are listed in uh, underneath the app directory, you can add the use client hook or annotation or directive or whatever to be able to do that. So if I type in uh, two in here, notice I'm getting this error feedback to show, hey, this isn't available. And then my different events I can navigate uh, from. And then again, if I go to something that doesn't exist, it will handle that error because of this error component being listed inside of here, inside of the route directory. So another specific component that you can reference is a loading component. So what we can do is inside of the same directory, so under the event ID route, we can add a loading.tsx file. And let's just go ahead and create this. And this is going to say loading and our loading will take place. So let's rename this to loading event. And we'll just say this has a piece of text of loading. Now we're not really gonna see this do very much. Let's go to community hour. It said loading for a second. It then said loading for a second because that a that action of requesting that data from AppWrite is asynchronous, we saw that little bit of loading state, but it was really quick because it's not getting that much data and our internet is pretty fast. Now what's cool is after that data has already been loaded, we're not having to re-query that data. All of that data still already lives with us, which is really nice. So again, let's refresh this and let's go from wins of the week to community hour and we see that little loading state. And what if we wanted to kind of make this a little bit more obvious that something is happening. Well, let's copy in a function that will allow us to add a delay into our event details page. So as we query this, let's add in a delay up here. So we add this little function that kind of runs a promise that uses set timeout. And we can call this by calling delay and then 2000, for example. So this will wait for two seconds. So now each time we go to this page, we should see a loading state of two seconds. So there's our loading state, two seconds, and then data comes in. Loading state, two seconds, data comes in. And then still after this, React or Next.js in this case is smart enough not to rerun this asynchronous code because it's already been run before. So even though we added in that two second delay, we no longer see that because it already has all the data it needs to render just this part of the application. Again, remember these nested layouts where the nav bar hasn't changed. Then when we get to slash events, this sidebar hasn't changed. And then when we get to the details of the actual event, that's the information that changes as we navigate between them, but it only queries that data as it actually needs it. So that covers a lot of the different functionality inside of the app router in Next.js 13.4. We talked about React server components. We talked about the new route directory structure with nested routes and layouts, page components, layout components, loading components, error components, etc. We talked about data fetching in the sense of React server components as you can have your data fetching on the server just co-located with your component, which does or maybe does feel a little bit awkward for you as you're used to a clean separation between the two. But in this case, I think it works really well. Now, the other thing I'm really interested in, in looking into is server actions. And server actions basically allow us to treat our forms in React as if they're doing full page submissions to an API endpoint. But instead of creating a separate dedicated API endpoint, it basically just creates a function inside of your component, co-located with your component that handles that server action. 
Now I was testing this out and I had some bugs and I, I don't exactly know why. So if you wanna see the source code for that and try to play around with it, it is in the source code for the GitHub directory that I mentioned at the beginning of this video that you can go and reference. In the meantime, what do you think about this new app router setup? Do you like it? Do you feel comfortable with it? Like most people, it will probably take some time, but I do think it adds a ton of flexibility, power and functionality to the way that we build applications. So let me know what other kind of content you would like to see with the React, with the Next.js app router in the future in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.